Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this cutie we're making today. Here are the supplies that we'll be using. So I'm starting today's project on an 8x10 MDF board. And there are two collage packs that I'm using, vintage wallpapers and then decorative elements collage pack. And both of those will be on sale this week. This sketch of the angel is also going to be free a free download in the resource library. And then the stencils that I used today will also be on sale for you this week. And maybe you can get your hands on some of those things and create this project along with me. So I am starting out, like I said, by, on an 8x10 MDF board and I'm putting my uh, papers down with some Liquitex matte medium. All of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. So I'm using Liquitex matte medium. I'm just going to get a good coat of matte medium down and I'm going to arrange my papers that seem interesting and I want them to kind of show through, peek through just a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of spreading them around because I'm not exactly sure how it's all going to go just yet. So here are the colors that I chose for the background. I wanted it to be soft and soothing and real mellow and light. And these are colors that I don't typically reach for. And um, so they felt really, really uncomfortable. I was pulling from the colors of the um, wallpaper pack and And I just, um, it just didn't feel normal <laughs> as I was putting the colors down. Um, but I got through that, past it. It's always good to step outside your comfort zone. It helps you grow. It helps you learn. And I found that the two colors, the peach and the yellow together, were yummy. So I'll do that again. So there's always something really wonderful when you step outside your comfort zone and try something new. I'm using my finger so that I can kind of smudge around the colors along with some gesso to add that variation in the color and so that I can really control exactly where it's going because I really am trying to be mindful to make sure that those papers kind of peek through. I want some of that wonderful decorative element papers and they do, they show up perfectly in the end. Um, but I can get carried away <laughs> and end up covering everything up and I'm trying to be more mindful about not doing that. So I'm trying to make my paints light so that they're a little bit see-through and leave room for those papers to show through. I'm working my way around the piece trying to balance out the colors. Um, and so if I'm putting yellow up in the corner, in one corner, and I'll bring it down to the other corner. And what that does is it just balances the piece out, helps the eye move around the piece. And you always work on one layer at a time. We're making sure that the, this next right step is exactly how you want it, and you don't worry about what else is to come. So this is my daisy stencil and I'm using gesso and I'm doing several coats of gesso so that it really stands out. You don't see me actually do all of the different coats of gesso, but I did two coats each to really make that pattern stand out and um, really kind of show up in all of that um, paint. And this is the um, Geo Mini stencil, I believe. Again, all of the supplies will be listed um, on the blog. And the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. 
So I took my sketch, I did the sketch on my computer, I have a tablet, and I sketched it out on my computer. And now I've, I've printed it out, and I've now taken a piece of tissue paper and put that over the sketch. And I'm just tracing around it now so that I can cut it out and put it down with my Liquitex matte medium. And so with the download in the library of this exact drawing, you could do the same thing. So I traced it all out and I've cut it out and I put a lot of matte medium down. That is the key to you working with tissue paper. Lots of matte fluid matte medium. The juicier the better because it makes your tissue paper disappear but you also have to be very gentle and very careful not to tear it. So my wing, um, I started out with a yellow color. Um, that is in the background. And um, I wanted that as a base to kind of hide the other color behind it and to kind of give it a little bit of a gold feeling. And it took a couple of coats to get the right color that I was looking for. And then once I did, I went back over it with my gesso and I wasn't real careful to get in all of the grooves because I wanted some of that yellow to kind of show up and it, and it worked out perfectly. So now I've got some Arctic um, blue, Arctic, that's the, the color is called Arctic by Lucas. And um, it is super soft, almost gray, but it has a blue tint to it. And it's, it's really, really soft. I love it. And I wanted just a little bit of that shadowy look on her dress. I didn't want to do too much because I loved the pattern that was happening. And so I just kind of smudged that around a little bit to um, kind of accentuate that her dress so that it didn't kind of get lost with all of the other things happening. And I'm just filling in her sleeves with the same color and I will fill in her face with um, that peach color that I have in the background. I just added a little bit of gesso to it to lighten it up and soften it. And I'll do her face and her hands with that. And I'm using a very fine tip brush. got a little bit of it's called sand it is a color that I used in the background as well and I'm doing her hair and I will add a few highlights a little bit of gesso to it and a little bit of yellow just to kind of give it a little bit of color and variety and then I'll add the other details to it with my shading so now I'm gonna really kind of beef up the angel wing and just add some brush strokes so like it would be feathers, I'm not doing it very um, evenly. Um, I'm using again that small brush so I get small strokes so that it does look inconsistent and kind of feathery. So I painted a tiny little heart in her hands um, with some rose color from Lucas Acrylic Paints and now I'm going around the piece with a little bit of gesso and some gray to really kind of separate it from the background so that it's not so busy all the way around and I'll be able to really make it pop and stand out. So I'm going around every single area around her, her heart, the body, the wings, um, just to add some separation from the background.
So as I went around her whole body and face, I did add a little bit of extra gesso around her face so that um, there was some kind of glow as she was looking up so that it would um, look like she was glowing or had a, her halo or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And really what I'm trying to do here too is kind of tone a few things down. But I wanted to leave that yellow up in the corner because to me that's where she's looking radiant light kind of thing. And so I wanted to leave that little pop of yellow up there and tone down the rest so that that really stood out. So now I'm going to come in and just start adding all of the detail. And I will shade around everything. Um, and really adding shading in all of the connecting areas like behind her back in between the wings really adding that depth because that's really going to make it um, have some dimension and really stand out So I felt like it all went to gray, which is part of the process. You know, you make a choice and then you go with it and then you adjust. And so I wanted to go back over some of the gray areas and add just a tiny bit of, of teal. And um, that's just part of the process. And really, honestly, in my opinion, all of those different layers are what makes a great piece. You do one thing and like I said, you focus on one layer at a time thinking that this is this looks good and then you do the next step and then you have to make adjustments in, in I don't care if you're working in a journal page or a huge custom piece or whatever, you always are constantly making those adjustments. So of course I had to add a little bit of grunginess to her um, skirt. It was all looking very, very um, soft and I just had to have a little bit of grunginess. So I used my square palette knife because I have a lot of control with that and just added a few strokes of gesso. And I wanted to add, of course, some grunginess to the outside. So I had got some raw umber and I did a wash, which is um, just your regular paint with some water. And I'm just picking it up because I, I didn't want to really go over the whole thing. I just wanted, you can see immediately, it gives it this just kind of shadowy effect and tea dyed or vintage or stained or something like that. And ah, oh, just makes me happy. I'm just 
just coming back and pulling back some of that wash in just a couple areas to make it even more uneven and grungy feeling. I am adding my heart, or adding my word, kindness to my heart. And um, I will finish up some of the finishing touches, like sh um, shading around the word. I'm adding a few splatters because, gosh darn it, I just had to have some color. I couldn't do it. And um, I will add some flowers to her hair with some fun new Arteza, um, Arteza acrylic markers. They are fabulous so far. I've been trying them out little by little in each of my projects using some sharp, Sharpie markers as well to add some fun and interest. And that is about it. So again, all the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, subscribe and like so that you never miss a video. And stick around for the conversation at the end. It's a good one about kindness and how much we need it right now. Uh, we need kindness and how kindness will bless us. All right, my friends, thank you for being here and I will see you next week. Well, all right, my loves, there she is. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I am just so pleased with how these angel wings turned out as the stencils. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wanted this to be really soft and kind of light, and I really wanted the color and the focus to kind of be in this area um, for, for the word. Uh, and going super light, it went really pastel for a little bit. Um, was really hard for me but I, I you know it's always great to try and work outside your comfort zone and you learn new things and find new things that you like whatever but um, so that was a little bit of a struggle at first but then it just kind of all came together as soon as I got enough contrast and that kind of thing but I just love this I love the softness I love how all the layers are peeking through that was the one I have a hard time with that and I'm working on that and I'm getting better um, so I just love it and the so the the collage packs that I used for this there's two the um, decorative elements in the vintage wallpaper um, those will be on sale for you this week as well as all the stencils that I used for this week and then um, the drawing of the gal <coughs> that I worked from the sketch um, I just did that on the computer. I have a drawing pad and um, just sketched her out. And um, that will be available free to you in the resource library and you can do that. Um, use that if you want to create your own. Um, I went over everything else within the video. So let's get to the meat of this, the inspiration. So um, the right now in the world that we're living in um, it feels uncertain and chaotic and um, everyone's feeling it um, it's it's worldwide um, we're all dealing with de dealing with this um, COVID-19 pandemic and um, we all deal with it differently we all have different circumstances we all have different family situations, all of that. It's all different for everybody, and yet we're all in this together. But there is one thing universally that we can all do, and that's be kind. Um, we, I know everyone is stressed, and I, I feel that. I have had a rash of like comments, emails, different things like that that aren't I have that in general are not kind um, they're just they're not hurtful in a sense that's just you can I it's the the stress and the tension and the 
uncertainty is palpable when I talk to people, when I get emails um, with regards to customer service or orders or whatever. And um, I just, and when I get that, and they might be harsh or whatever, um, I just have to take a step back and say, everybody is in this weird, weird place. Just respond with kindness. Just be a blessing. And that is the one universal thing that we all can do during this time. We might not have a lot of resources. We might be super vulnerable because of not being working or health or family or whatever. And we're all stuck in this place. But we can be kind. We can bless somebody else. We can pick up the phone. We can text. We can check on a neighbor. We can buy some groceries for someone who can't get out. Um, we can just say kind words to each other. We can put a note on the front door for the delivery people saying thank you. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can be kind and bless. And you know what happens in that? When we do that, we ourselves are then blessed. When we bless others, when we give kindness to others, we then have this, this space within us that is also blessed. And we will eventually, maybe not right away, but eventually get kind words back. And that's what happened this week for me with the comments uh, or whatever, emails, different things that came up. I just responded back in the kindest way possible and kindness was returned. Everyone is stressed. Everyone is unsure. Everyone is like this a lot of the time. And we all can do one thing to our, for our family members, for our neighbors, for our loved ones. Even if we can't physically see them, we can... Um, call them and text. I have FaceTimed more with my family, with my kids this week than I have in years. And it's wonderful. So there are blessings within this crazy time. And we can be a blessing to others with our kindness. That's it. Just kind words makes a huge difference. A thank you uh, to, a, to a grocery store worker will send them in tears. So um, I just wanted to remind you today that I love you guys and I am praying for all of you. Um, and I know that we are will be better and stronger once we get through this. And we can be kind in the midst of it. And the blessings that happen because of that are, are unforgettable. They just are. So loves, um, have a wonderful week. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your soul. And um, be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And we will be blessed. All right, my loves, have a wonderful week. And always know that you are loved.